We have done titrations before in this class, but I want to take time to look at what happens to the pH of a solution during a titration. Here is a pretty typical titration curve. This is a titration between a strong acid and a strong base. You are starting with the strong acid in your flask and you're adding a strong base from your burette. And I know this for several reasons. One, I'm starting with a really, really low pH initially. That's the pH of what's in the flask. So that indicates to me that I'm starting with a strong acid. I'm ending with a really, really high pH, which tells me that at the end I'm going to have an excess of a strong base. But the key point is this equivalence point. That's the stoichiometric point where you've matched the exact amount of base and acid. And if you take a look here, the equivalence point happens kind of midway between your two plateaus, where you start out with a low pH and where you end up with a high pH. And you'll see that in this diagram the equivalence point is at exactly 7. And we know when you mix a strong acid with a strong base, you're going to get salt and water, and the salt that you're going to produce must be neutral. So this is the pH curve of adding a strong base to a strong acid. We could do just the opposite. We could add a strong acid to a strong base. And we've just flipped the curve. You're starting with a strong base, so you start with a really high pH. And you're adding an acid, and so the pH is going down. You'll note, however, that you get these really strong inflection points. And the reason is, initially, you have an excess of base. And at the end, you have an excess of acid, or in the first curve, at the beginning you have an excess of acid, and at the end you have an excess of base. So the equivalence point happens when you have a transition between the excess of one material and the excess of the other material. So if you have an excess of an acid, you will have a very low pH. If you have an excess of base, you'll have a very high pH. And that transition happens very quickly through the equivalence point. So around the equivalence point you have a very sharp and sudden change in pH. And that's why you've had that frustrating experience doing a titration where your solution is clear, 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 and then all of a sudden with a single drop, your indicator changes color very rapidly. Because just in the span of one or two drops, you can have a very sudden change in pH. This is a titration curve of a strong base being added to a weak acid. And I know that for several reasons. One, my initial pH is starting a little bit higher than before, which means my acid wasn't as strong as in the initial graph that we looked at. My pH is still ending up relatively high, so that's telling me that I'm going to have an excess of a strong base at the end. But the key here is that if you look at your equivalence point, all right, that midpoint between the two plateaus, my equivalence point is now at a pH higher than 7. And we know if we mix a weak acid with a strong base, the resulting salt will be basic. And at the equivalence point, again, you just have the salt and water. So you're going to have a basic equivalence point. It should be no surprise, then, if I start with a weak base and add a strong acid, you'll get a pH curve that looks a little bit like this. Here, you'll see that my initial pH wasn't as high as the last chart I looked at. But my final pH is really low. So that's telling me I'm starting with a weak base, ending with a strong acid. But the key point here is that if you look at the equivalence point, it's at a pH lower than 7, which means that the resulting salt that I'm making is acidic. Again, between a weak base and a strong acid, we would expect an acidic salt as a product. I have this diagram of doing a titration between a strong base and a polyprotic acid, and theoretically this is what it looks like. You should be getting an equivalence point after the first protonization, an equivalence point after the second protonization, so this would be a diprotic acid. For a triprotic acid, we would expect a third hump like that. Now, I have a master's degree. I studied chemistry throughout college, and I took two years of chemistry in high school. I have never been able to replicate this curve in the lab, but theoretically, this is what it should look like. When doing a titration, we have a choice of indicators that you can use to find out when you hit that equivalence point. And you can see that from this range, these indicators all change colors at different pH ranges. When choosing an indicator, you actually want to choose one that changes color near the pH you expect of the resulting salt. If in a strong acid and a strong base, you want an indicator change somewhere around 7. 
a strong base and a weak acid, you would want something in the higher pH range. And a strong acid and a weak base, you want a lower pH range. It's not essential that you hit it perfectly, however. Because you have such a sudden change in pH around the equivalence point, as long as your indicator is in the ballpark, one or two drops will get you from the equivalence point through the indicator. As long as you pick an indicator around the ballpark that you want, you'll be in good shape. You'll note here, for example, that phenolphthalein starts changing color around a pH of 8. When we used that for a sodium hydroxide hydrochloric acid titration earlier, we would expect that pH to be 7, yet we were still happy to use phenolphthalein. The reason we use phenolphthalein so commonly as an indicator is because a lot of these other indicators are fairly carcinogenic, and phenolphthalein, though not pristine in itself, is a safer option than a lot of these other indicators. The last thing I want to talk about is what happens when you do a weak acid with a weak base. Here's a curve of a weak base being added to a weak acid. And you'll see that the curve is not nearly as distinct as we saw when you dealt with a strong acid or a strong base. That's because you have very subtle changes in pH throughout the titration. So picking an indicator and seeing a sudden change in the indicator happening is actually pretty difficult to do here. So for our intents and purposes, we're going to avoid weak acid, weak base titrations. We're always going to have at least one strong substance in here so that you can have a sudden change in pH around the equivalence point and that you can have a definitive change in color of your indicator.